Hello and welcome to CNN Student News. I'm Carl Azus reporting from the CNN Center. As March marches on, we're glad you're taking 10 minutes out of your Tuesday to watch our show. First up, the Middle East, where there's been fighting for decades between Palestinians and Israelis. President Obama, like other U.S. and international leaders, is trying to encourage peace talks between the two sides. But they're not going well, and violence between Israelis and Palestinians flared up this month. Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas was at the White House yesterday, two weeks after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu visited. The two Middle Eastern leaders disagree so deeply over issues like land borders and security issues that the U.S. is having trouble just getting them to talk to each other. The Obama administration set an April deadline for the two sides to agree on a path toward peace. That'll likely be extended through the end of the year. The U.S. and European Union have issued sanctions or penalties against Russian officials, but they only directly affect a handful of people. The sanctions will prevent about 32 Russians from traveling to certain countries and getting access to some investments they have in those countries. This is all about Crimea. It's a region of Ukraine where more than 96% of voters elected to split off from Ukraine and become part of Russia. The U.S. and European Union called Sunday's vote illegal and said they wouldn't recognize it. Russia supports the vote and says it's protected by international law, allowing a region to govern itself. Because Russia also supports troops who've been in Crimea since Ukraine ousted its former president last month, the U.S. and other nations want to penalize Russia. Time for the shout out. The largest earthquake ever recorded struck what country? If you think you know it, shout it out. Was it the US, Indonesia, Chile, or Iran? You've got three seconds, go. In 1960, a magnitude 9.5 earthquake shook the nation of Chile. That is the biggest quake on record. That's your answer and that's your shout out. That's a tsunami warning alarm you hear in this YouTube video. It went off Sunday in the South American nation of Chile. A magnitude 6.7 earthquake, which is characterized as strong but not extreme, struck not too far from Chile's Pacific coast on Sunday. It did cause a tsunami, according to the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, but there was no widespread threat. Nothing major actually hit Chile, and there were no immediate reports of damage or injuries. Up to the Pacific coast of North America, another quake hit on Monday morning. You can see here how two news anchors from KTLA reacted. The quake that hit Los Angeles was magnitude 4.4. You can feel those, but they only cause minor damage. If you live in an area prone to earthquakes and you're indoors, experts say to get under a desk or a table like the reporters did, or to stand near an interior wall away from furniture, fireplaces, and appliances. If you're outdoors, head for open spaces. You want to be away from buildings, power lines, or anything that could fall on you. The families of the 239 people aboard Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 are struggling with the unknown. The father of a missing passenger says all he hopes for is that officials find the plane. An 11th day of searching turned up nothing. There are countless theories for why the plane vanished and where it could have gone. Yesterday, a Malaysian newspaper reported that the aircraft might have been flown low to the ground to avoid being picked up by radar. So figure an altitude of 5,000 feet or less. With a plane this size, is that even possible? Getting it down to 5,000 feet and what the difficulties would be to fly it there. I'll point out something right now. We are actually at about 6,800 feet altitude wise, but above the ground, we're only 1,400 feet. The reason is we're flying that northern route. We're over Pakistan. This part of Pakistan is extremely mountainous. The terrain is very undulating with a lot of high mountains. We're having to navigate, as you can see, to sort of pick and choose our way to go through these mountain passes or to clear the mountain tops. And again, that's at about 6,400 feet. Let's take it even lower because if we're really trying to evade radar, you've got to do almost nap of the earth flying. This is when you're going to start getting all sorts of warnings and alerts because this airplane is so automated it is trying to tell the pilot, look, if you want to fly this low, it must mean you're trying to land. We're not. We're just trying to fly low. In order to uh, try to appease the aircraft, we could lower the landing gear, which I'll show you how. 
Now we've got the landing gear down. The problem with this is it at least quiets some of the alarms, but the other problem is now we're really drinking a lot of fuel. Whoever is in control of the aircraft, if this was the route they took and this was the altitude they tried to fly, that they knew the terrain they were going into. Remember, for this simulation, we made it daylight, but for that person at that time, it would have been nighttime which means that any of the ground hazards would have been extremely hard to see. And without a transponder transmitting, it would have meant that any other aircraft wouldn't know we were here. Sarah Bareilles may want to see you be brave, but on our roll call, we already know who is. The Braves, Indian River High School. They're online and fearless in Chesapeake, Virginia. We may be one day after St. Patrick's Day, but it's not too late to recognize the Irish. They're watching from Hackett Catholic Central in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And on the West Coast, we found the Saxons, North Torrance High School in Torrance, California. It's great to see you on our roll. I'm a former drummer. I played for a few years back in middle and high school, but I wasn't as good as Jason Barnes. He's 24 years old, lost part of his right arm two years ago in a roof cleaning accident. Scientists at Georgia Tech developed a robotic arm for him. One part reacts to Barnes' bicep to do what a hand and wrist would do. The other uses a computer chip to react to the music it hears and tries to enhance what's playing. Here, my, my first lesson with my drum teacher, and he was kind of curious as to how I played drums. And then I also explained to him that I would be able to do more and, and things that I used to be able to do with some robotics. And it was pretty exciting to do. To have a stick with a mind of its own that can listen to Jason, improvise, surprise him. It's definitely like adding another brain to the equation, um, playing your instrument with another person. It can push music to new domains and, and maybe even lead to new kind of music genres. It, it has potential to play things better than, than I normally would or anybody normally would. Yeah, practice makes perfect. Yeah. I think it's a pretty new area to create robotic musicians, meaning these robots are first musicians and only then robots. There's a rescue crew called Henry One at Sonoma County Airport in California. One thing its members train on is saving people in remote areas like rugged mountainsides or cliffs. But it's not always people. A woman recently called 911 after her black Labrador retriever fell off a cliff and got stranded on a two by two foot ledge. It couldn't move without falling. The sheriff's office doesn't want people risking their lives trying to save animals, so it sent its own crew to retrieve the retriever. As you see in this YouTube video, the dog was airlifted to safety and afterward reunited with its owner. Sometimes it's a steak, sometimes a burrito, sometimes you just feel like a big old bowl of pasta. Well, check it, y'all. A big old bowl of pasta. Orders up! In honor of Italian American Marching Club Parade, chefs strung together more than 500 pounds of noodles, 150 pounds of sauce, and countless calories, all of them delicious. It fit, if you can say that, into an eight foot wide bowl. Of course, no one person is gonna eat this. We doubt he'd make it past a couple pounds before spaghettiing pretty sick. If you're looking to bake up a record and you're willing to shell out the money and time, that's exactly the sort of thing that'll make a mealing full impression, that'll bowl people over. Though putting it together would take you al dente long. It certainly spices up our show with a saucy story that we hope will keep you carving back for more. I'm Carl Azus. This is CNN Student News.